So someone sent me this picture from a recent X-Men book. I had already seen it because Yellow Flash posted it on Twitter. It's from that Iceman one-shot that I mentioned in my last Iceman review. I said I wasn't going to review that comic, and I'm keeping my word. But I am going to talk about this thing right here because, ooh boy, does it prove SJWs cannot human well. I'm going to go through this whole page and explain what's wrong with it, and then I'm going to tell you about a dream I had that makes more sense than this origin story. I'm not going to make anything up. I'm just going to recount the dream, and it's going to be more interesting than this shit right here. Okay, first we get the bio. For some reason, there's been a name change. Instead of Shade, the guy is now called Dark Veil. Except he still uses Shade as a drag name, and uses it in the previous Iceman books, so it's really not a former alias. Ah, the joys of not editing. Most of the bio is fine. We find out the dude's name, Darnell Wade, and about his shitty job in retail. Then we hit some bumps. Identity. Secret-ish. Right. Either you have a secret identity or you don't. This is like when people say that they're only out to their friends. So you're out of the closet. Just because some people don't know doesn't mean you're not out. Same thing here. If people know who you are because of your drag persona, which is also your superhero persona, then you don't have a secret identity. What you have is someone who thinks he can be a gay porn star and no normies will ever find out. Dude, they already know. And now you know why they stare. Then we get legal status, American citizen, with no criminal record. Why do we need to know that? Racist. Marital status, single, but not without suitors. Really? Does it need to be so catty? But then we get a good one. I'm going to read it, and I want you to listen carefully. Known relatives. Known relatives. Known. Key emphasis. Known relatives. The response. None that we know of. Oh, this is real. Look at the screen. It's real. In print, through an editor, actually published, known relatives, none that we know of. I can feel the stupid trying to get into my brain. Oh, but that's not the one. This is the one. Look at the screen, damn it, because you need to see it to believe it. Group affiliation, none. 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 What the fuck are all these exes doing on this bitch then? There's an ex. There's an ex. There's an ex. What group do you belong to? Oh, I'm by myself, honey. Bitch, your balls are crossed into an ex. Come on. The rest of this is just silly for no reason. Height, six feet. Six, seven in heels. We didn't need to know that. Wait, never ask a lady. You referred to Darnell as he throughout half the bio genius. Eyes, brown, with purple contacts. Nobody puts contact colors in their bio. Eyeshadow palette. I tell you to eat a bag of dicks, but you'd probably enjoy that. We've got the hair and lip color, and again, why is it so catty? Then we get to the powers. Darnell uses the Dark Force, which is this energy force in the Marvel Universe that controls darkness and allows people to teleport. Then Xenograce adds himself into the mix again with, she's also been graced with an impeccable wit and is a lip sync assassin. You wish. So all of that is the general data behind this character. Then we get the origin, and... Yeah. While some kids saw their superheroes fighting a good fight on TV or on phones, Darnell Wade heard it on his rooftops, saw it out his windows, and felt them everywhere in New York City. Passed around Brooklyn's foster care system, Darnell always knew there were heroes everywhere, but none close enough to help save him from a world of hard knocks. Okay, cliche, but okay. Here's where it gets sad, and not heroic sad, but please make the stupid stop sad. Now an adult in his mid-twenties, the never on top and always broke Darnell makes ends meet working at a used clothing store while moonlighting as Shade, a drag queen inspired by New York superheroes. This, this right here, was inspired by Daredevil, Captain America, The Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Thor, Night Thrasher, Speedball, Black Knight, hell, pick any hero. All I see is a half-assed 90s X-Men knockoff suit. Actual drag queens have better outfits than this. Moving on. She, wait, Darnell is a he. You just called him he. Why are you switching pronouns? She and her BFF queen, spilling Tiana Taylor, just let it go, run a lip sync night in Astoria, hoping to get on a drag competition show. She gets picked up without her partner. What the fuck am I reading? Am I being punk? Is that what's happening? This is supposed to be a superhero origin story, not a rejected script for Monday Night Raw. What the hell does this have to do with being the superhero? T gets picked without her partner, 
and brings a reality crew to film her snubbing shade while taking their duo show away from her. I, I don't care. Why are you telling me this? I really don't care. The rock hits bottom when Darnell comes home to find his, so now he's a he again. Jesus Christ with the fucking pronouns. The rock hits bottom when Darnell comes home to find his electricity has been shut off. Is this how he gets his powers? He starts fucking around with the electricity, gets shocked, falls into the darkness, and when he comes back, he's all like, I believe in a big corner, just a of my heart. No, because that'd actually be kind of cool. This is what happens. And I want you to look at the screen so you can see this is real. This is his actual origin, and I'm going to read it in full, and you're going to listen. Disconsolid, Darnell wishes he could just disappear, and that's when his mutant powers emerge. Darnell's fan becomes endued with Dark Horse, allowing him to create pocket voids. A shopping spree at a makeup store with a fellow queen goes awry when the cops come, and Darnell loses his friend while escaping through the Dark Force. From that point on, Darnell vows to never use the Dark Force unless he's bringing joy in drag as a newly minted and newly solo Dark Veil. With a power so dark, he chooses to use it only as a means of creating light in the world. Except for the friend he ditched. I mean, Riku and Mickey at least tried to find Aqua. Mickey didn't leave her in the realm of darkness on purpose. This hero uses his powers to steal and then drops his friend like that bitch was out of fashion. What a hero. Doesn't try to find his friend. Doesn't even mourn his loss. Just goes, I need to focus on me right now and bring in joy joy feelings to the world. For the children. So like every other SJW hero, Darnell Wade is a selfish bitch. Who didn't see that coming? Oh, but there's a bigger problem. Mutants get their powers when they hit puberty. Some of them are born with them like Nightcrawler, but usually they get their powers with the onset of puberty. So unless Darnell has been taking hormone blockers for the last 10 years, we've got a problem. Second point, the powers emerge usually following some traumatic event. This lame fool gets his powers moping in a dark room. So nothing happened during all them years in foster care to trigger Darnell's powers. Nothing at all. Little Finboy, because you know he was, running around, nobody did anything that might have triggered his powers. Nothing. So not only is a character a selfish bitch, but he's also got the lamest origin imaginable. I mean, is this really the best you've got to offer, Cena? This is the best that you could do for an origin story. Are you even trying? Because if this is you actually trying, that's sad on so many levels. But if this is you phoning it in, let me show you what my phone in and in looks like. I'm going to tell you about this dream I had. A few things up front. I always know I'm dreaming. So usually I just go along with things because if I mess with it, my subconscious will turn on me. I also can usually figure out what caused the dream to happen. In this case, the dream happened right after the Covington High School thing. I just finished watching Westworld Season 2. And I'd been thinking about Xenosaga around the time. So all those things merged into this. There's a dark-haired boy standing on a platform of this massive futuristic train station. The trains are twice the size of Amtrak trains, and they're pulling into this building that I can't quite see. I'm seeing everything like it's a movie, so think of it like it's out of frame. The whole place kind of looks like 5th Jerusalem from Xenosak. The kid is about three levels above the main train lines, and you can see dozens of tracks that go into this building. The kid looks like a generic boy next door high schooler. He's not that tall, has a kind of athletic build, but doesn't look like he could crush someone. He's got on a uniform that looks very militaristic, kind of like the Realians from Xenosaga, but not quite. And then we see the first thing that gives away that something's different about him. He's carrying a huge duffel bag stuffed to the brim that's damn near his full height and looks at least four times his weight. And he's not even struggling with it. He's excited, and so is a kid who runs up to him. This kid looks the same as the first one. He's got half his head shaved and is slightly more muscular, but basically they're identical. Then a third one comes up and his face is all scarred up, but he basically looks the same too. Behind them we see these airbuses landing on the platform, and out comes dozens of the same generic white boy. Each one's slightly different because of hairstyles, physical builds, scars, and uniforms, but basically all the same person. Now, there are regular people walking around, some of them ignoring them, some scowling and staring, but our three boys aren't paying them any attention. They're excited because this is the first time they've ever been on a home world. It's the first time they've ever seen so many intact buildings, clean skies, birds, actual living birds, and so many different faces. They start talking about their plans now that the war is over, and the kid with the scars, and let's just call him Scar, starts acting out his plan to become a cook. The other two, let's call them the kid and Buzz, 
aren't buying it because Scar is this obvious badass. Like, imagine Cable becoming a cook. Yeah. Well, Scar bumps into some normie as he's waving his hands around, and the guy is pissed. Scar apologizes and goes back to his story, and the guy is like, fucking dupe. Scar apologizes again, but the guy starts making a scene. People stop and watch. The other kids are getting off the airbuses start moving really quickly, and the guy berates Scar, constantly calling him dupe. Buzz tells the guy to stop using that word, and the guy's like, oh, dupe doesn't like it? What you gonna do? You gonna hit me, dupe? Isn't that against your programming? You want to do it though, don't you? Don't you? The guy moves into Buzz's face and then Scar tries to separate him. And the guy loses his shit because Scar touched him. He starts screaming for the cops, saying that Scar attacked him. All three of the boys instantly freak out and try to calm the guy down, saying that Scar didn't hit him, only touched him. The guy doesn't care though and keeps screaming for the popo. The cops show up, he tells them what happened, and Scar and the other boys deny it. The crowd, however, backs up the guy, saying that Scar tried to kill him. Scar flips out, screaming that he didn't do anything, but immediately realizes his mistake and tries to calm down, but it's too late. The guy calls him out for being unhinged and demands that Scar be referred. The boys are stunned. The cops draw their guns, nervous as hell, and tell Scar to come with them for refurbishment. The other boys try to talk the cops out of it, but it's hard for anyone to hear them because the trains are pulling in. The cops motion for the other two to step away from Scar. They tell Scar to come with them or else. Scar looks at the cops then looks at the guy. Tears are in Scar's eyes and it throws the guy off. Scar looks at the other boys and for a moment they're horrified and then they just look sad. Scar leaps off the platform. One of the cops swings to fire and the kid, the first one that we met, grabs the cop's hand and slips his finger in between the trigger and the butt of the gun. Scar falls to the tracks just as a train pulls in. His blood reaches up to the second level. There's total silence and then Buzz screams and you can hear every piece of his heart breaking. He slides down the safety barrier and cries. The guy who lied asked why, and the kid, still holding the cop's hand, says he was going to be referred. The guy stares at him, clueless, and the kid explains. The cops would take him in, scan his brain for glitches, and whether they found anything or not, they'd save any military data, wipe his core, and recycle his body. The guy is stunned. He's like, they kill him? And the other cop is standing there, kind of surprised, like, you didn't know? Any duplicate who harms a human is destroyed. The kid says, still holding on to the cop, that Scar had made it through everything. He was one of the first ones sent into the war. Twelve years in the field, in 17 different units. He made it through. they just gotten back from Anthem. And a few people gasped because I guess this is one of those crazy battles where just about everyone died. And the kid goes on, still made it through. Now he's dead. And he looks at the guy and says, because of you. There's this long silence and finally the kid says to the cop, even though I'm strong, I can still feel pain. Please stop pulling the trigger. Cop eases up and the kid lets go. The guy is still pissed though and demands that this kid be arrested for assaulting the cop. And the kid says, we're programmed not to harm people or let them be harmed. If he fired, the bullet would have ricocheted off the building and struck the tram window. It wouldn't have killed the conductor but he'd lose control. At this speed, dozens would die, hundreds would be injured, and he'd still miss his mark. And of course, right in that moment, the dream starts to shift. But since I know I'm dreaming, I'm like, well, wait a minute, what the hell are dupes? And ask and ye shall receive. What I get is this Starship Troopers-like propaganda reel that explains the whole origin of these guys. This is how awesome my subconscious is. Duplicates, which are basically realians from Xenosaga and hosts from Westworld, were created to handle jobs humans didn't want to do. Originally, they were designed to look like all kinds of humans, but a certain group of people were bothered by the realism. Not the emotional realism, but the physical realism. You could fuck them. That was a problem. You could fuck them. And that certain group of people didn't think that it was right to have female duplicates. So a law was passed banning their production. The dream doesn't say what happened to the existing female duplicates, by the way. Well, other people thought that it was a bad idea to have duplicates with certain skin colors and facial features, so those were out too. That pretty much left white males as a template. But no one wanted the duplicates to look intimidating, so their height and muscular builds were limited, even though this didn't affect their actual strength. They were given this 16-ish generic boy next door look and their appearances would change based on their profession so it would be easier to tell who did what. They also had this randomly internal termination switch installed. 
Some would live a normal human lifespan, while others could live up to their full 200-year range. All was good until the wars happened. Instead of humans fighting each other, they just sent the duplicates. During the wars, though, some countries like the U.S. granted duplicates human status, but with a catch. They are still programmed not to attack humans. If they attack a human, it's assumed that there's a glitch in their programming, and they have to be destroyed, regardless of the reason. Meaning that if they killed someone by accident, they'd still be terminated. This was called refurbishment because their cores and bodies could be recycled. Before I could dig any deeper though, and make any sense of it, I woke up. Now, that was very long-winded, and if you stuck around for it, thanks for hanging in. But I just wanted to prove a point. That little dream, with these white child soldiers being hated because of what they are, with their convoluted, contradictory origin, is still better than whatever the hell this Dark Veil shit is supposed to be. And this was just a kooky dream. There was more thought put into that thing by my subconscious that Cena Grace put into something he intentionally wrote. Insanity. Pure insanity. Or maybe I'm just that good. And I'm pretty sure that's not true. It's just lazy writing or a lack of creativity that's happening with Cena Grace. Welcome to Marvel 2019, where our hero's origin story is that he sat in a dark room feeling bad about himself because his friend ditched him for a reality show. Enjoy.